So today is my last day down under, before I leave Australia and fly off to the Mediterranean. To commemorate this occasion, I decided to get some shots around Sydney, including at the iconic Sydney Opera House. As I have travelled this world, I have reviewed various games and handhelds as I have made my way around. One of my favourite things to do on this channel is to talk about fairly obscure games, so I thought that today would be a great time on this trip around the world to talk about Trip World. Yeah! Trip World is perhaps the rarest, or should I say the most sought after game on the original Game Boy. On eBay today, copies are currently selling at hundreds of pounds. Trip World is a 1992 platform video game developed and published by Sunsoft for the Game Boy. It was released in Japan in 1992 and was released in Europe in 1993. Sadly, this is one of those games that never saw a North American release, so automatically the game became more scarce than others from the get-go. At first glance, Trip World looks a little bit like a scaled down version of Gimmick, which is another Sunsoft cult classic platformer that was only released in Europe and Japan. Apart from a few aesthetic similarities, Trip World though is a different game altogether, and one which gamers can actually enjoy around the world if they track it down, as the Game Boy range was completely region free. No region locks on the handhelds back then from the evil Nintendo. They were just busy ruining everyone's fun with their console region locking instead. So no official copies of Gimmick on your NES for you America. Nintendo didn't want to allow you to play that one. Anyway, apart from the similarities with Gimmick, Trip World also has a lot in common with Kirby's Dreamland games, which are also available on the Game Boy. Trip World, like Kirby, is another cutesy platformer where you control another, um, adorable sentient ball of cells? This sentient ball of cells name is Yakapu, and you must play as it through five relatively large and slightly linear stages. In doing so, you must venture through mountains, jungles, oceans, caves and a castle. These stages also feature some secret passages and divergent paths to give the game some shortcuts and some minor replayability. This simple 2D side-scroller's objective is to guide Yakupu to find the stolen flower of peace. The game is set in Trip World, a peaceful world where Yakupu lives. He is a young member of the Shabubu race of bunny-like beings. Yakupu lives with his grandfather, an old Shabubu, on the holy mountain known as Mount Jubius, where the Mater flower is found. The named flower is the flower of peace and is deemed to have supernatural powers. Because of this, it is usually protected by Yakupu's grandpa, so that it won't fall into the wrong hands. However, one day, mysterious shadowy creatures appear and attack Yakupu's grandfather and steal the flower of peace. Since the Mater flower has been removed from its place, the peace is gone and the inhabitants of Trip World get mad and don't stop quarrelling with each other. In order to save his world, Yakupu sets out to find the thieves and return the Mater flower. From the game's opening cutscenes, this flower appears to be very important, as without it for some bizarre reason, the inhabitants of Tripwell turn mad. So the creatures of Tripwell essentially act as the enemies within this game, as they channel their inner Charles Mansons. At the end of each of these stages, or worlds as the game calls them, Yakapu must defeat bosses at the end of each one, and in the fifth and final stage, the player has to defeat multiple bosses in a row in order to complete the game. In regards to the bosses, the game features its fair share of mini-bosses too, to further mix up the gameplay. So, what really separates Trip World from other platformers? I suppose one of the factors would be Yakupu himself. You see, Yakupu is able to shapeshift between three different primary forms at any time. These forms are manually activated by the player when desired. In his normal form, he is able to walk and jump and can attack enemies by kicking them. Yakupu's ears can also transform into wings, which allow him to fly in a limited way. In his third form, Yakupu resembles a fish. While he can't move on the ground, the fish-like Yakupu is able to swim well and attack enemies with foam in the water. Beneath these three forms, Yakupu also occasionally shapeshifts into other forms, which can't be manually activated or deactivated by the player. These forms instead are reached by grabbing power-ups and allow Yakupu to turn into forms such as Flower Yakupu, which allows him to stun enemies with seeds, or Tower Yakupu, which gives him a tower attack with a long range. Through looking at old reviews for this game, I have noticed that some of the main criticisms for this game have been surrounding the game's short length and difficulty, 
with many people stating the game is too easy. A German magazine, for example, gave the game 68% and referred to Tripworld as a better platform game praising its graphics and music, but commented that Tripworld is ideally suited for inexperienced players due to its low level of difficulty. Obviously many of these criticisms are from 1992, and since that time period I feel that gaming culture has evolved somewhat, and we no longer judge a game's quality based on its length really. The game is just the right length to be enjoyed and have a short playthrough without becoming bored or disinterested, which is quite a little feat for a retro game in my opinion, as many with their insane difficulty often leave the player with a sour taste in their mouth and a dose of rage after a playthrough. The game is relaxing, but in my opinion does get challenging at times. In my opinion it is much more difficult than that of Kirby's Dreamland for example, and the game took me a few playthroughs in order to actually beat it. It really isn't the easiest platformer like many 90s reviewers appear to suggest, but it is far from the most difficult either. You may feel a slight twang of rage here and there, as the death animations for Yakapu is bloody identical to that of Mega Man, which might bring you back to some nostalgic rage moments. I'd call the difficulty level mid-range I suppose, and personally think it pairs perfectly with the game's short length for a little replay value. One thing I have neglected to mention thus far is the game's music. This is one of the areas this game really does shine bright. Trip World features some of the best arrangements of music I have ever found in an 8-bit Game Boy title. I suppose the best way to describe it would be almost Shovel Knight-like, which is a recent 8-bit style title which set the world on fire with its soundtrack. If you appreciate the music in Shovel Knight, I am sure you will like what Trip World has to offer, and you can obviously get a taste of its sounds by listening to the backing music throughout this video. So overall a great little gem, which was fairly obscure on release, so you would have to assume that Trip World would have been the end of Yakapu. Surprisingly though this isn't the case at all, as he went on to make appearances on the Neo Geo, the Neo Geo CD, the Playstation, the Sega Saturn and even the Arcade. This may have technically been all in the same game, but a great feat nonetheless for such a minor character in gaming history. Yakapu's appearance was in Sunsoft's fighting game Galaxy Fight Universal Warriors, and appears as a mini-boss and with a more detailed look. According to the game's plot, he is the pet of Galaxy Fight's final boss, Rui, if I'm pronouncing that right. Like in Trip World, Yakapu retains the ability to shapeshift, however this time he can do it into whoever he fights against, providing for a mirror match. It is also great to hear Trip World's music in an amazing 32-bit. The background music in his Trip World themed stage is an arraigned version of the background music heard during the second to last boss fight in the Trip World game itself. So yes, cameos aside, Yakapu should be best appreciated for his appearances in Trip World, a nice little gem which all fans of retro gaming should try to experience themselves. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that physical copies of this game now sell for hundreds at a time on eBay. However, if you don't fancy forking over the money for this game, there is an alternative and possibly better legal way to play this game too. Trip World has been released on the 3DS Virtual Console, and this is how thus far I have experienced the game myself. The game was just a couple of pounds, so it was a nice cheap bit of fun as I tripped around the world myself. In fact, I enjoyed this one so much, when I get back to England I'd like to add a physical copy of this one to my own collection. But for now, I'll be spending my money on my last few months of freedom as I travel back to Greece to begin my final few months of handhelds around the world. Yeah! Thank you for watching today's video. It's always fun to cover underappreciated handheld games whilst travelling the world. Shouts out to Shizuka Kobayashi, Mad 8 Productions, Andrew Bazanski, Peter Sedorn, Mike Frost, Edward O'Reilly and all of my other patrons. Thank you all for your support, yeah! If you want to be added to this prestigious list, then check out my Patreon page. Ta-ta and farewell.